Oh my god, they're killing Adam, and that is pretty terrible. I get why they're doing it. I really do. I'm not trying to defend the decision that they are going to do it. It made perfect sense. I knew as soon as Microsoft acquired GitHub that Adam, at some point, was going to go away, for sure. So I want to talk a little bit about that, and then I want to just take you on the journey that I had with Adam. Adam is a very special editor to me, and I don't think I've ever told the story as to why I got involved with it and, you know, how it's helped me up to present day. So first, I 100% understand why they're getting rid of it. It was, it was pretty clear when VS Code came out, of course, that's a Microsoft product, that that is what was going to succeed Adam. Once they bought GitHub, it didn't make a ton of sense for them to continue working on VS Code and then also keep working on Atom. And although I purposely stir controversy by saying Atom's better than VS Code just to, just to work everybody up that likes VS Code, I do actually recognize that VS Code is the better editor for sure. And on December 15th of this year, we are all going to have to say bye to Adam as we know it. They're going to archive all the projects. I suspect the package manager is going to not work anymore. And then that's going to be that. Evidently, Adam's original author is making a new thing. I think it's called Zed. And that's going to be not using Electron, but it's going to be using Rust. And that's supposed to be the successor to Adam. I'll uh, check it out when that time comes. So why is Adam such a special editor to me? So I got my start using literally MS Notepad. You know, this would have been in like the mid 90s. I would move eventually to Dreamweaver. And then from Dreamweaver, I would move to Eclipse. And from Eclipse, I moved to NetBeans. And I stayed on NetBeans for quite a long time, probably until like 2013. And in 2013, if, if you might recall from, from my other history, I, I was primarily a PHP developer. So I worked at a place that was a professional PHP shop, and they were all using PHP Storm. This was a, a product by JetBrains, and this was one of the first JetBrains products I actually ever used. Now bear in mind, this was about 10 years ago, and PHP Storm at the time came at a pretty hefty price tag. And... I only used it because I worked at a company that paid for it. It was not something that I was ever going to buy. I got the licenses from there, so I was able to use it at home and also at work. And so I really got used to JetBrains products. And to be clear, in my opinion, JetBrains products are superior to any product out there. And that's really what you would expect because it is a commercial editor. You have to pay for it. There's a big team around it. So naturally, it's most likely going to be the best thing. So this was right around the time too where I was kind of shifting away from PHP and I started developing everything in Node.js. This was right during that transition period and the, the Node.js version on JetBrains was something called WebStorm. Technically it was for JavaScript front ends, but it worked all the same for Node.js projects as well. I was able to get the license for WebStorm from the previous company that I used to work at, so that was all well and good. But eventually I no longer worked at that company, and then I still had WebStorm, but it was really out of date and I really wanted the new one. So WebStorm, like PHP Storm, about you know nine years ago was very expensive and it just wasn't something that i wanted to buy i, I just I, I wasn't about paying for an editor you know not coming from NetBeans and this and that yes the editor was great but it was not worth the at the time a few hundred dollars and it was the sort of thing where they made you buy it and then you had to pay to upgrade it and they they released upgrades like once a year and it just became clear to me that if I stick to this, I'm going to pay this company hundreds, if not thousands of dollars over my career because you had to buy every version separately. So if you wanted to do JavaScript applications or Node.js, you had to get WebStorm. If you wanted to do PHP, you had to get PHP Storm. And then there were a variety of other JetBrains products as well, and they were all sold separately. And this is ultimately what led me to Atom. I really had a couple of options. I could use Sublime Text, that was still very popular during that time, or I could use this new kit on the block called Atom. And so I downloaded it, I converted everything over to it, and I absolutely hated it. Not because Atom was terrible, but because Atom was not WebStorm. And I was very, very, very good at WebStorm. I knew all the hotkeys, everything was perfect, and it was just very difficult to switch. But I knew deep down that I had to let WebStorm go. I had to just suck it up and make Adam work and just deal with it and just accept that it's going to take time, but eventually I would figure it all out and then this would be my permanent editor going forward. I picked up this editor when it was pretty much brand new. Adam came out sometime in 2014 and I started using it also sometime in 2014, maybe like May or June. 
and from May or June of 2014 all the way to present day, which has been pretty much exactly eight years, Adam has been the only editor that I have ever used in that time. It is an editor that I know inside and out. I know everything about it. I know all the hotkeys, all the bindings. I'm extraordinarily efficient with Atom. It's the only editor that I've ever used on this channel. Every piece of software that I've, I've built has been done with Atom, both professionally and on YouTube. So I guess the question now is, where do I go from here? So in the near term, I'm most likely going to download tons of Atom packages. I'm going to archive the most recent Debian package for Atom, and then I'm going to try to ride on that for as long as I can. I will say that the technologies I use and the packages that I've used and have been using for roughly the last maybe five or six years haven't changed all that much, so I don't think I'm going to have an immediate need for anything new. I think it's going to be good as is. I'm not sure if I'll ever actually use VS Code. I almost feel like on principle I can't use it because they're the ones killing Atom. And I, I think that they hope that everybody that used to be Atom users will just go be VS Code users. For me personally, speaking strictly on the technology, I, I don't have strong feelings about any particular editor. I just want to use something to where I personally am very efficient and productive at what I'm doing. That's the most important thing to me. And at the moment, Atom Editor is the thing that I am most productive in. I get the most done with that. And that's pretty much it for the video. I'm not that happy about this. I understand why they did it. I wish it was not happening. I wish Atom Editor just lasted forever, just so I could keep using the same thing I always have and won't have to learn something new. But I totally understand. And I guess I'm going to look at how the code editor landscape is going to evolve over the next probably six to 18 months and then see what happens. If you are also a loyal user of Atom Editor, let me know below in the comments about what you think about all this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As always, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care.